The following lecture is from my Udemy course, Complete 3D Animation Masterclass, Cree Animated Shorts. If you like my teaching style and are interested in taking your skills from intermediate or beginner to advanced 3D artists, consider enrolling in my course. Link in the bio. All right, so now that we have our AOV set up, we're ready to explore how we're going to use these. We're going to use these using a technique used in film called multi-pass rendering. And what that means is we're going to render all of these at the same time, but more specifically into a single file called an EXR. EXR files are a special file format developed by Industrial Light and Magic for use in film, and they have the capability of doing this multi-pass render, but storing these in a single file. So that way, instead of ending up with one, two, three, four, five, six individual image sequences, we end up with one. And this is easier for file management, and it's also easier to take advantage of different types of software, uh, such as node-based software, where you can pull information kind of like Hypershade. So they have a lot of advantages. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna test this out. We can test this out by saving from the Arnold render view and coming over here to File, and saving a multi-pass render. So we'll go to File and you'll see a Save Multi-Layer EXR. We can click on that. This will bring us into our images folder and we can just save this into here as our test render and I'll create a new folder here called Test. I'll make it all cat so it's easy to find. And in here, we'll just go ahead and save our robot animation test render and save. Now with this, we can actually hop over to After Effects and we can get this set up. So let's come to After Effects here. I'm just gonna hit the exit button in that corner and we'll go ahead and set up a preview of this. Now, due to the nature of After Effects to use references, we can actually get our entire composite set up inside of here with this single image and then later bring in our image sequences once they're done rendering. So let's go ahead and start with that. Uh, it would help, however, if our image was the correct size. So ours currently is not. So let's go ahead and backtrack here and in our common settings, scroll down here and set this to be uh, the render setting we're going to want to go with. We'll set that to HD 1080. And now if we go ahead and render this, we can see how this looks. This is going to take quite a bit longer. So let's go ahead and give that a moment uh, and then we'll be able to see the final result. As you'll notice, it does take substantially longer to render a 1920 by 1080 image. If you want quicker renders to get through this course, I encourage you to just use HD 720. HD 720 really is good enough for videos currently. There's no need to go to 1920 by 1080, but if you want something that's going to endure the test of time a little bit more, a 1920 by 1080 render would be preferable. So just be mindful that it is going to take substantially longer than the HD 720 render and that we're currently at a low quality render setting. All right, so now that that's finished, let's come in here to File, Save, Multi-Layer EXR, and I'll just overwrite my existing test render now that we have the proper resolution. So let's open After Effects now. We can navigate to where we saved this in our images folder, and we can go ahead and drag and drop it over here into our project bin, just like we would anything else. Then we can drag and drop this down here and we can see it inside of our layer view. Now you might notice this already looks a little bit different and that's because this is in linear output mode. So what we have here is the linear image. So just be aware of that. Uh, how do we separate this out? How do we see these layers? We're gonna need to come over here and find an effect which is our EXR extractor. Now the way they call this is a EX capitalize and then track Tor, the EXR is capitalized here. So we can type in extract, E-X-T-R, and you'll see inside of here, we have this option here called extractor, right? I'm pronouncing it that way because the EX is capitalized and the R is capitalized. And this is going to allow us to extract different images. So we can drag and drop this onto our layer and this will now apply the effect. You'll notice something happens here, which is the gamma space gets changed. So it's actually going to bring us back to the correct gamma space that we were looking at. Now that we have this applied, you'll notice that we have this channel up here and this is how we can access the different layers. In this drop down menu, you'll see that our various layers exist. We have our ambient occlusion, we have our ID, 
our Z depth, our diffuse, our emission, and our specular. And as we click on these, you'll see it assigns them. We also have access to our default beauty by removing the extracted data. <laughs> now, how are we going to get this set up? Well, layer duplication is really the only way inside of After Effects. So when you use After Effects, we'll go ahead and set up one layer here. And I'll just make this first one called AO. I'll right click and rename down here. So I'm right clicking this location, the name, rename, type in AO and hit Enter. Then I'm going to take this layer and just hit Control D to duplicate. And then I'll assign the next one here, which is ID. I'll right click, rename, name this ID. I'll control D to duplicate. I'll switch this one here to Z depth. We'll go ahead and just name this one Z depth. I'll control D to duplicate. And we'll get into the ones that matter. So we'll get diffuse here. So you have to be careful when you're working with these. I double click the Z depth layer and you'll see it pulled it out into a separate tab up here. If you double click a layer, it goes into layer view and it shows you what's in that layer. You want to make sure that you click back to the composition if you accidentally do that. So the Z depth here, uh, I can assign the diffuse to <laughs> and we can go ahead and rename this diffuse or color, whichever you prefer. I'm going to name it diffuse because color is different. I'm going to control D to duplicate that. We're going to make emission, rename this emission, and then I'm going to control D to duplicate that, and we'll go ahead and rename this, and uh, this one will be our specular. And we'll look at the specular now. Okay, so I'm going to reorder these. Uh, I want the ambient occlusion to be on top of everything uh, in terms of the color information, and then the Z depth and the ID can be up here in their own space. Uh, I'm going to turn off their visibility and the ambient occlusion's visibility for now. And we're going to talk about reconstructing the base here, the emission, the specular, and the diffuse. So the way we reconstruct these is through blending modes. And you might notice we don't actually have access to any blending modes currently. Uh, so let's take a look at where those live inside of here. What you're going to do is down here on this bar where the names are, you're going to right click and there's an option here called columns. And I don't know why these are hidden by default, but you notice there's a section here called modes, which refers to blending modes. If you click that, that will turn the blending modes on. This blending mode section works just like Photoshop, and it's going to allow us to composite these. Now, generally, as the bottom layer, I like to keep my diffuse. You need to keep one bottom opaque layer, so we're going to have that diffuse on the bottom there. And we can start by introducing the specular here, which is our specular highlights. How we're going to do that is in our blending layers here, our blending modes, we're going to use a mode called add. Add is the proper blending mode to combine render passes, and that just simply uses an add mathematic. I mentioned when we set up the AOVs that we were working with additive space, and that's why AOV for our ambient occlusion had to be set up custom. And that's the reason is basically every one of those AOVs that you're going to use to recreate a scene is just using add, just adding. That's it. So if we drop this down, you'll see add right here, and we can add that on top. And now you'll see what we've accomplished is we've added specular to our scene. So you can see how easy it is to add that on top. We can then turn on the emission here, and we can do the same thing. We can set this to add, and you'll see we've now added the emission on top. So what we've done is we have rebuilt our render. So those three channels are all we needed. But now we can start to modify it in various ways. For example, ambient occlusion here. We could put this on top. And you'll notice if you set this one to add, it looks a little bit strange. So what you use for the ambient occlusion is multiply. And you'll see that multiply shadows on top. Something to be aware of is this almost always is too intense. So we do tend to have to tone this back. To do this, we can use the opacity by clicking the drop down menu for this layer. Expanding out its transform here and gaining access to opacity. So with that, we can reduce this down and we can adjust this to look good. I find that usually somewhere between 30 to 50% is ideal for most scenes. I'll go ahead and set this down to 30 for now, and that will serve as our start point.
Now, you might also notice this image is still a little bit dark compared to our beauty. If I were to come up here to my project and drag my beauty back in here, uh, obviously it's very bright here. If I were to use the extractor, you'll still see that it is slightly brighter. And that's just a consequence of these being arbitrary output values being added together, but we can adjust these now individually or together using things like adjustment layers. So let's go ahead and create an adjustment layer here. I'll come up here to layers, new, and create an adjustment layer. I'm going to name this my gamma, and I'm going to place this above my ambient occlusion. I could also place it below. We can always change it later. And I'm just going to attach a levels here. So I'm gonna to come to my search bar here, type in levels, and we can drag a levels from here onto our gamma. And this levels here will allow us to adjust this. Uh, you'll notice we don't quite have a white range. It's going off the charts. That's mainly because we need to expand this out further. <laughs> but what we can do is we can adjust the middle gamma here to find the right brightness for our scene. So I can play around with this to brighten this up to use something that looks appropriate. And I actually liked what it looks like in the linear output render. I believe that's actually what we're getting inside of Maya, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so we can bump that up to be a little bit closer. Unfortunately, After Effects' extractor does alter that and it does make everything darker. It applies an sRGB gamma curve here. Other software like Nuke uh, that's node-based does not actually do this. It doesn't convert these. So it's preferred in many cases, but there's nothing wrong with it after effects for what we're doing here. So we'll just find something that looks nice there and uh, we'll get that adjusted to be a bit brighter. Now from here, if you wanted to apply this on the individual layers, for example, the diffuse, we could add a levels to the diffuse here, drag and drop, and we could just adjust the gamma of the diffuse. So if you wanted to brighten that, we could. I could also bring up the range here. So you can see we now have full control just over the color there in terms of what we want to achieve. And that is going to double up with this gamma, of course, but you can see that's pretty neat. Now, we're not going to worry about that for now. We're going to just delete out that levels, but that's going to be how we can reconstruct those AOV passes inside of here. So we'll take a look at how we can beautify this later, but that's the power of the multi-pass EXR. Now, as far as ID goes and the Z-depth, we can explore how to use those later. Let's go ahead and save this because we can load in our files once we complete them. I'm gonna do a save, save as, and we'll come in to our section four project. I'll create a new folder here and we'll just call this compositing. I'll make it all caps so I can find it later. And I'll name this one our robot animation comp01, composite one and save. All right, so that is going to be the basis of reconstructing our AOVs and also how we can create a preview EXR. Now what we need to do is we need to adjust our render settings to be max quality again, and we need to create a multi-pass EXR batch render.